Trash. I'll start with minimal wave and how I came with the term minimal wave. Initially, I was collecting a lot of minimal synth and post-punk and cold wave. And so in my mind, there was a lot of crossover there because cold wave bands had guitars and minimal synth bands were purely electronic. To me, minimal wave was where these paths crossed. So I was just really interested in those very specific types of electronic music. Originally, I think it came out of the punk and new wave scene. At that time, uh, in the in the punk milieu, everybody had to do something creative. In the beginning of the 80s, there was a lot of unemployment, and um, all the young people, I mean, we couldn't get any jobs. And and the generation before us, the hippies, we hated the hippies because they were talking about peace, love, and understanding, and they had all the culture jobs. They were sitting on those. They could do records. They could do everything, and we couldn't do anything. So, so the the only uh, space was left for us at that time was do a protest against all the good feelings and good things they were doing. So that was very much what punk milieu were, were about at that time. When I was playing in uh, Bounds, the problem, you know, is that we were just trying to reproduce what has been already made, you know. Synthesizer was different because uh, what I was able to do with synthesizer was things that I was not hearing on the radio or elsewhere. Some machines, you know, like the 808 or 909, or, they have a really strong personality, so when you are using it, I mean, from a user to another user, the machine is running the music more maybe than the musician. Minimal Wave is music that was made with synthesizers, drum machines, usually pretty primitive sounding home recordings. And I think mostly because that equipment became accessible to people who wanted to start bands. When the track was recorded, it was finished and I was going for another one. Because there is no way to save anything. You are turning the pan pots, you are turning the buttons, you are going from one machine to another, the recorder is running, and when it's finished, it's finished. That was the difference regarding the music that was made this time. I started the label in 2005, and it was a pretty spontaneous decision. At the time, I was collecting a lot of old minimal synth music. I had been DJing at a bar in Brooklyn, I was playing a cassette track that had been a very limited edition release from the UK, a duo called Oppenheimer Analysis, and the people just went nuts. It was at that moment that I just thought this stuff needs to be on vinyl so that people can play it out. So the first record was pressed in an edition of 500 copies and it sold out like, immediately. And then it just went on from there, it just became kind of like this addiction. It's like, well that worked, so I'll just do another one and another one and so forth. The bands are from all over the world. Throughout the late 70s and early 80s, there existed small pockets of music that was very similar. Some of the artists are from the UK, from France, from Belgium, from Mexico, from Argentina, from Spain, from Japan, Australia, the US. Yeah, they were from all over the world, basically. They were mostly doing it as a hobby. I mean, for example, a lot of these artists weren't full-time musicians. This was like their, their personal diary where they would record on their own time, give their tapes to friends, and that was it. I've never been a salesman, you know. I know how to make music, but I, I don't know how to sell it. So I was making music for me. I was trying to express my, my feeling and emotions, making that music, recording it, making it listen to friends, and also sharing it on small labels. But uh, making music for me was curing me, was healing me. I was able to express in music what I was not able to express with words. The essence of Minimal Wave is, so I would say it's a revolutionary take on pop music. 
I think ultimately, if you want to have a one-liner to describe it, that's, I think, what it's about. Because it is very accessible, and it's not unlike what you hear on the radio, but it's more personal and it is very forward-thinking.